Good evening, visitors, and welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last poster ceremony. My name is Jared Pratt, and joining us today from the Australian Army is Private Anne Collishaw. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that love and support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland, who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony from across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by visitors to the memorial. If able, please stand and join in singing the national anthem. If able, please be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's first World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through until the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozier. France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and on operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest, Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today we remember and pay tribute to Private Albert Anderson. Albert Anderson was born on the 26th of July 1905 in the Sydney suburb of Paddington to Amelia and Andrew Anderson. He married Doris May Rose and had four children, Doris, Ruby, Faye and Stanley. Anderson was 35 and serving as a Lance Corporal and motor driver with the militia when he enlisted in the 2nd Australian Imperial Force on the 3rd of March 1941. He was posted to the 2nd 3rd Motor Ambulance Convoy and the next month embarked for Singapore, arriving on the 24th of April. With Japan's entry into the war, an invasion of the Malayan Peninsula preceded the attack on Pearl Harbour by a few hours. From mid-January 1942, the units of the 8th Division were embroiled in fierce fighting against the Japanese. During this time, the 2nd, 3rd Motor Ambulance Convoy saw constant action, transporting the wounded to safety over dangerous terrain and under fire. On the 14th of February 1942, Commonwealth forces in Malaya were forced to surrender and Private Anderson was among the 45,000 British and Australian troops who became prisoners of war. His unit was tasked with transporting the wounded Commonwealth troops into Changi prisoner of war camp, where he was held for five months. During this time, he was able to send a brief letter to his wife, reading, I am a prisoner of war, I am fit and well, love to you and the children. He was described by his mates as a caring man with a well-developed sense of humour. He was initially held at Changi prisoner of war camp, but the Japanese soon called for working parties to build and expand new infrastructure across their empire. In July, Anderson volunteered with B Force, which left for Borneo in July 1942. The men had been assured of better food and conditions, but the almost 1,500 members of B-Force found themselves on a hellish sea journey, crammed into the cargo holds of the Ubi Mari for 11 days before arriving at Sandakan. Conditions at Sandakan soon devolved into some of the worst experienced by prisoners of the Japanese. Prisoners, including the sick, were forced at gunpoint to work on the construction of a military airstrip and were often beaten by their captors. Illness and death ravaged the camp and food was scarce. The completed airfield was soon destroyed by the Allied aircraft bombing and between January and May 1945, those prisoners who could be made to walk were forced into a series of marches west to Renault a distance of around 260 kilometres. Those who were too sick to make the journey were left behind to die. Of the more than 2,400 prisoners in Sandakan, only six survived the war. Before the second march took place, Private Albert Anderson died of malaria on the 11th of May, 1945. He was 39 years old. Japan surrendered to the Allies on the 15th of August, and that October, a recovery team sent to Borneo found a non-issue identity tag that had belonged to Anderson in the ruins of the Sandakan camp. The tag fastened to metal a map of Australia resting on a boomerang. Private Albert Anderson was dearly missed by his family who placed memorial notices in the newspapers for years after he died. He is commemorated on the Lower Bourne Memorial in Malaysia, and his name is listed on the Roll of Honour on my left, amongst 40,000 Australians who died while serving in the Second World War. His photograph is displayed today beside the Pool of Reflection. This is one of many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Private Albert Anderson, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope 
of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli with his poor tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. We thank you all for visiting the Australian War Memorial and wish you all a very good evening. Thank you. <laughs>